Welcome to this video where I'm going to be going over my process for creating cinematic scenes like this in Blender from concept to execution, going over ways I've developed to make this process more efficient and easy. So to demonstrate this I'm just going to be making this meadow scene. Now the first step is to get some inspiration for what you're going to be doing. It helps to have a rough idea in mind at this stage, though sometimes I just scroll through asset libraries like Polyhaven or Sketchfab to get some ideas for scenes. I find it interesting that it can be so hard to come up with a concept when you have no constraints, however as soon as you limit yourself in terms of what assets you can use, ideas tend to come a bit easier and it's much easier to be creative. There also isn't enough emphasis on the fact that when using downloaded assets, you're not attached to them in any way, and it's much easier to delete ones that aren't working than if you'd slaved away on each asset for hours. Once you've downloaded a few assets, it's time to settle down on an environment and start blacking out your shot. You can really do this however you'd like, but I like to start with the ground planes using proportional editing on a subdivided plane to get some nice hill shapes for these outdoor scenes. Then I'll work on adding more large elements of the scene, here that means adding in the tree and some grass scattered on the ground plane. To scatter this grass I just used a very simple geometry node setup, but you could do this with uh, particle systems or any other method. I'll choose a nice base material for my ground, but I won't worry about it too much as it's barely going to be visible anyway. And that leads me on to my next point, which is don't bother wasting time on making things perfect that you're barely going to notice in the final render. Instead, spend your time and energy on things that you'll notice in the shot. Like in this example, I didn't spend ages refining shaders. Instead, I focused my efforts on making sure that the animation on the cables and the grass look good, as these are much more prominent here. So it's a good idea to get a camera roughly locked in place before going any further at this point. It's okay to move it a bit more and play with the focal length, but I try to avoid doing it much later than this. So with this lock camera I start grabbing some rock assets and placing those around the scene, added in some telephone poles I found with some sim simple Bezier curves as cables in between them, all the medium and smaller detail shapes at this point are coming in. And it's time to start thinking about how I'm going to light and render this scene, as up to this point I've just been viewing everything with Blender's default HDR, but I want to start bringing in my own lighting. Now we already knew for this scene I wanted it to be uh, kind of stormy and dark in a nighttime setting, however sometimes I'm not sure how I want to light my scenes, and in those cases I just tend to download a bunch of HDRs and cycle through them until I find something I like the look of. And for this particular scene I couldn't find a HDR that perfectly matched what I envisioned, so I opted for taking a daytime one with dense clouds and darkening and tinting it in the world shader using hue saturation value and some mixed colour nodes set to colour. And this way I could tint things blue and darken it down a lot until it looked like a nighttime kind of a sky. And these kind of shader tricks are useful for any asset you download really when it comes to marrying it up with the rest of your shot. For example I could have also tinted the grass in the same way if it wasn't working or I wanted more of say a bright green without making a whole new shader. And at this point everything was very dark which makes sense but I wanted to introduce a bit more light and interest so I started with a directional light to imitate the moon at a low power and rotated it around nicely. And I grabbed this lantern model Parented a point light inside of it and made it a nice orange flame colour. Placing this in the scene you can see it's very noisy by default and that's because it's trying to refract through the glass object of the lantern. So I just turned off shadow visibility on that glass object and turned off caustics in the light path settings and then everything looked much nicer. A common mistake I see when it comes to lighting is over lighting a scene and particularly for cinematic shots try to be conservative with your light sources and don't be afraid to let parts of your image be in the shadow and make sure every light in your scene is justified and has a reason to be there. And a common way I see um, this done is by people naming their lights the actual source in the real world of what they would be. So over here I would name them directional light moon and the lantern light flame and that kind of thing and it, and it stops you from sort of adding in extra lights just for fun. At this point I grabbed this awesome character model from Sketchfab that worked uh, right away in Blender. I just posed him to sit on this rock with the included rig. I, I tweaked the roughness of the shader a little bit to match the idea that this was going to be set in the rain. And once I sort of had a frame that I was happy with, I started to think about how I could bring more life to the scene. So I started out by adding some camera shake by simply keyframing the camera once and then in the graph editor I just grabbed its rotation components on the X and Z and Y 
and just added in a noise texture on each of those and tweaked it individually until the camera looked handheld. This is a really quick and easy way to add camera shake to any of your scenes. Um, it's really important just to turn the scale of the noise texture way up and the strength way down so you don't get something that looks completely unrealistic. And then to add some um, wind effect to the grass, because I had this all in geometry nodes, all I had to do was rotate these instances and I just rotated it by a noise texture. And then to get a little bit more complicated, I decided to incorporate a wave texture that would sort of um, emanate out from a central point and this would just multiply the effect of the noise so that it sort of felt like um, waves of wind were rushing over the grass. Then to animate the cables in between the poles to imitate the idea that this was sort of in a very windy stormy setting, I just used a bit of geometry nodes on the Bezier curves and added in a set position with a noise texture to distort the curves and just played with the values on that really. Then I plugged in seconds input into the W coordinate on the noise to evolve that over time and that worked quite nicely for the, the wires and then just meshed it at the very end. A little bit of character animation, nothing too crazy, um, just really simple rotations on the legs and on the head just to give it a little bit of life so it wasn't completely static, but that can always be a bit of a tricky thing to get right. Another nice little trick was um, using the same noise texture method as on the camera was on the light in the lantern. I just keyed the intensity of it and then used the noise texture uh, modifier on that uh, key in the graph editor. And to that basically let the light flicker a little bit, so it wasn't just a constant light source, it sort of felt a bit more maybe like a flame getting affected by the environment. At this point I was getting quite happy with how the scene was looking, so it's time to start adding in some more atmospheric effects. And a really easy way to do this is to make a cube that covers your entire scene. And in its material, remove the surface shader and give it a volume scatter shader and turn the density way, way down until it looks good and fades off naturally in the background. For the rain, I used some um, simulation node stuff. You could do this with particles or any other way. There are thousands of tutorials on that. But I basically just made this plane as my emitter, then used geometry nodes to distribute a bunch of points on it, and then added in some simulation nodes to move the points down every frame using a set position. And then to randomize this, I added in the frame input to the seed of the distribute points node and then also added a additional set position with a noise texture to randomize the points position more as they move. Then I just instanced out a stretch sphere on them and rotated them to line up with a direction of motion and that looked great. Of course giving the sphere a nice water shader by just turning up the transmission and down the roughness. And then once I was happy with how this was looking, I started to jump into the compositor. So I just rendered one frame and then I just added a little bit of lens distortion, some film grain, some vignetting, all my regular stuff. And then started to play with a color balance node to increase the contrast a little bit. It helped actually to set the color management settings from um, base contrast to punchy. And that helped quite a bit to bring out the darks and the lights in the scene a bit better. In my earlier iterations, I ended up making the scene really, really dark. And I ended up moving away from that slightly with the grading and just brought up the midtones a little bit more. Now, in order to render this to an animation, you could just render this through the comp and save out some um, PNGs and that would be give you your final images with everything sort of baked in. But to get a bit more flexibility, I decided I wanted to separate the comp out from the final renders so that I could render out some images and then run those through the comp. So if I wanted to tweak the grade afterwards, I wouldn't have to re-render everything from 3D. So I decided to set an output directory uh, rendering to EXRs. And the reason for this is they preserve a lot more information than PNGs about um, dynamic range. So the uh, bright parts of your image will not clip out like they would on PNGs and the dark parts um, contain more information too. But yeah, from there I just made another Blender file and then I grouped up my comp in the original file, called it something, and then just appended that into my fresh file. And then in the compositing tab, 
I made sure to match my color management settings, so setting it back to punchy. And then I brought in all the EXRs, ran them through the comp, and then wrote them to an FFmpeg video set to MPEG4, um, which is MP4. And that was my final video, basically. And in terms of render settings, I left everything pretty much at default, just turned my samples down to 256. So I rendered that out. It took around an hour and a half. Uh, that was mainly because the rain was so heavy to render, really, with all the glass shading going on. But yeah, thank you for watching.